Hi everyone, I'm Shane Stevenson, Director of Museum Collections and Curator here at the Buffalo Naval Park, and I am standing on the fantail of USS The Sullivans. So for today's video, it's actually the last day of the season here at the Buffalo Naval Park, and I'm going to be talking about the Fletcher class destroyers as a whole. All right, a little about their service history, their construction, and um, so I'm going to be heading to different parts of our Fletcher class destroyer while talking about the Fletcher class destroyers as a whole. All right, so I'm standing on the fantail right now, but we're going to be heading down to the engine room is the first area that we're going to go to. So you're going to follow me, and I hope you enjoy this video. Okay, so now I'm standing in the engine room of USS The Sullivans. If you've watched prior videos on our YouTube channel, you'll see that I talk a little bit about the engine room, and certainly over the winter time we had some uh, flooding in here, and so you'll see, you can see some of those videos, the bilge snipe videos they're called, and also we did a joint one with the USS New Jersey, talking about the uh, power plant and the engine rooms. Uh, so the Fletcher classes were born from uh, the Benson, Sims, and Pryor classes. All right, by this time in U.S. Navy construction, they're, con they're building uh, carriers and battleships and uh, cruisers that could go about 33 knots. All right, but they understand that the destroyer's role is they need to go a little bit faster than that. All right, so while the Fletchers were originally going to be a little bit smaller than the Bensons and the Sims classes, and prior classes before that. They actually turned out to be much larger by about 500 to 700 tons and then long tons, maybe even up to 900 tons heavier. So what that did, and the need for a greater speed, what that did was that created the need to create a larger power plant. All right, so our two engine rooms here on board the Fletchers and all of the Fletchers had uh, redundant systems. They had separate uh, fire rooms and engine rooms. Um, this was increased to about 60,000 shaft horsepower. All right. Earlier classes were anywhere from 45 to 50 to 52,000 uh, pounds of shaft horsepower. The Fletchers turned into about 60,000. All right, so that's a little bit about the early construction. Uh, of in the engine rooms here. So let's keep moving forward. So I'm standing on the bow here with mount 51, uh, the first forward mount of the 5 inch 38. Certainly I've talked about those in other videos. Fabulous uh, dual purpose uh, weaponry. But I'm going to show you some of the schemes that in 1939 for the Fletcher classes that were originally chosen. So the differences in some of those schemes were the beam or the width of the ship, All right, and certainly some of the armaments. Some of the armaments called for one uh, twin barreled five inch and then two singles on the back, or there was just three singles, four, and ultimately five, which is what was finally chosen. All right, so out of the, the original in 1939, out of the original six schemes, there's one chosen. That was plan number one, and then from that, they did six different variants of the one particular scheme or plan. But by 1940, those earlier treaties that uh, kind of harnessed and restricted uh, the U.S. Navy and British building and uh, French building uh, of warships uh, was being ignored, for lack of a better phrase. And so, in 1940, those initial 1939 schemes were obsolete. And so they, cons they had new schemes that they invested in, and eventually one of the plans was finalized. The ship was lengthened a little bit to make it a little sleeker and give it a little more speed, and the beam was set, right? That's the width of the ship. And so then by uh, 1940, they had finalized the scheme that they wanted, and they, the U.S. Navy ordered 24 constructed uh, as the first Fletchers to come off of the ways. So now I'm standing midships with the deck house, the galley, 
and the forward stack right behind me. So in 1940, they ordered uh, the U.S. Navy ordered 24 Fletchers to be constructed. By the end of 1940, that had ballooned up to about 100. And then with the bombing of Pearl Harbor and America's uh, entrance into World War II, uh, on two fronts, uh, they ordered another 75 more, bringing the total of the Fletcher classes to 175. By far the largest uh, class of destroyers uh, at that time and certainly in the American Navy, throughout the history of the American Navy. Alright, so now it's time to check out some armament and to talk about some of the original designs. So let's head on over uh, after a little bit to the weapons. So the original configuration for the, the, the original 24 Fletchers was to call for uh, the two quintuple torpedo tubes, so for a total of 10 uh, torpedo tubes on board. It also called for the five centerline 5-inch uh, 38s, and it also called for the 1.1 cannon shown here. But the British were in the war a little bit earlier than the Americans, especially obviously in the Atlantic, and what they were finding was the 1.1 cannon uh, wasn't that effective. Alright, so behind me you'll see an addition that certainly for the Fletchers that were already constructed uh, were retrofitted, <laughs> so they might have been in service for one or two or three months and they're already being retrofitted into these 20 millimeter Orlikans. Uh, that you see behind me. Now again within that configuration there was seven on board on some, there were ten on board on others. So again it was very organic based on where the Fletcher was going, Atlantic or Pacific, and what, their, what the duties were of the Fletchers at the time. Because even the duties of the destroyers changed as World War II uh, got on, so to speak. All right, so this is an example. We have these. They were not on board in the 60s, I'll tell you that, but we did add them when the USS The Sullivans came here. And we'll, uh, in addition to that, they also added the Bofors, like these. Now I'm standing on the wraparound bridge here at USS The Sullivans, and this is a wraparound because she was constructed with a square bridge design. Now, up until the USS Brownson, which was DD-518, most of the Fletchers had a round bridge. All right, and I've got some pictures to show you to show that. So you'll see on the rounded bridge, they were able to have the bridge wings where, uh, you know, the compasses were and where the captain could be, but looking beam, all right, cutting across from starboard to port, if there was action going on cutting across that beam in the center line of the ship, the rounded bridges were not adequate to, for the lookouts and the bridge officers to see what was going on with the action. So the square bridge was constructed from USS Brownson after. So you had about 45 or 50 Fletchers that had the rounded bridge. And then after that, with the square bridge design, you could also create the extended wraparound bridge that was not covered during World War II, but that was added later. But because of the just the inherent construction of the square bridge, you were able to have that wraparound. With the rounded bridges, you were not. So we have a couple examples, certainly from the Sullivans and the USS Miller, all right, of the squared bridge, and then a couple of examples with the rounded bridge. All right, also pretty cool for the organic nature of the growth of Fletcher class destroyers was the fact that three of them actually had a catapult, all right, for a Kingfisher plane. All right, it's a recon. All right, so we're looking at the aft uh, superstructure right now, and that would have all been gone. In this area here, which held one of the quintuple torpedo tubes, was a catapult for uh, one of those Kingfisher planes. 
All right, so that was the uh, USS Pringle, USS Stevens, and the USS Hulford. They found that they weren't that successful, which is good, you have to do trial and error, right? Uh, so what they did was by December of 1943, they were all restructured in the traditional way, like other Fletcher classes, and the catapult and the recon plane was removed. So now I'm standing on the aft superstructure right next to Mount 54, which is the fourth center line 5 inch 38. Now, here for the Sullivans, uh, after the war, they removed Mount 53, the third 5 inch 38, which is on the forward part of the aft superstructure. Forward and aft, forward and aft. But right at the beginning of the aft superstructure was Mount uh, 53, which was removed. And they removed it because right at the end of the war, they were in San Francisco getting refit and they added one of those 3 inch 50s to c combat the uh, kamikaze threat. So unfortunately they weren't in Tokyo Bay when the Japanese surrendered. But later, uh, later in her service, they removed Mount 53 totally and they expanded the ready service locker for the 3 inch 50, which is the uh, ammunition hold for the 3 inch 50. They expanded out the gun director and they also expanded out radar. Because by that time, these 5 inch 38s wouldn't stop a jet, but you're still doing radar and picket duty, which, ne which necessitated the need to bring on new radar equipment and new antennae uh, to do that picketing. Alright, so in addition to, as you see, the Sullivans being converted through the 50s and into the 60s, there were other Fletchers that were converted as well. And one of the things was, one of the new additions was a rocket launcher. So for some of the Fletchers, as you see here, they had the Mount 52 removed. In addition to those uh, post-war, Cold War additions, a late war World War II addition here for the Sullivans was the Hedgehog system seen here. Now this had changed and developed over the 50s and 60s uh, from the Mark 10 to the Mark 15, uh, but we still have our Hedgehogs here and in, of course, in the original configuration of the Fletchers, this is where the 40 millimeter Bofors would have been. Like these. So I've always loved the organic nature with which uh, U.S. Navy vessels are constructed. So even after the Fletchers were finalized in their design, they were already thinking about constructing the, ne the next destroyer, the Allen M. Sumner class. So really, the Fletchers weren't really even off of the drawing board before they decided uh, on new designs that would bring 20% more firepower and they were able to widen the beam by 14 inches along with some other modifications. All right, at the end of this video, I'm going to be showing the 19 Fletcher classes that were lost um, along with the number of crew uh, that remain on eternal patrol. All right, so if you like this video, please click the subscribe button. All right, ring that bell to get future notifications. If you uh, look on the right-hand side of your computer screen or down below if you're on a uh, phone, you'll see other suggested videos. And we hope you liked this video and I hope you learned a little bit. And now it's time to pay homage to the 19 Fletcher classes lost during World War II. Thank you very much and we'll see you again soon.